Good afternoon, I'm Chloe Pittman with your 145 Bulletin. The Muslim Council of Southampton are hosting a peace vigil in honour of the recent terror attacks in New Zealand. It will take place tonight at the Peace Fountain in the city's East Park. There will be a moment of prayer and reflection for the 50 people that lost their lives this, that evening. Abby Lambden is outside the Peace Fountain. So Abby, what can you tell us about the event happening tonight? It's quiet here right now, but at 6.45 tonight, it will be a lot busier. The Muslim Council of Southampton have organised a peace vigil for the recent mosque attacks in New Zealand. From the other side of the world, here at the Memorial Park of the city, East Park, a peace vigil will be taking place to pay respects of the, fa to, of the family victims. Recent events on Friday, a terrorist attacked two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, leaving 50 people dead. After the vigil, refreshments will be available at the Medina Mosque, which is a short walk away from here. Everyone is welcome to pay respects at the Peace Fountain tonight. Thanks, Abby. Totten Railway Station still doesn't provide disabled access for passengers wishing to get on and off the trains heading south on Platform 2. There are currently steps on both sides of the footbridge and the platform. Disabled passengers are being forced to get off at Southampton Central where lifts are available to the exit. Alex Daniel tells us more. Totten Railway Station that is situated just outside of Southampton has been in use to passenger services since 1859. However, in 2019, accessibility for disabled passengers wishing to get on and off of trains heading south on Platform 2 is still non-existent. As mentioned, Platform 2 remains inaccessible to wheelchair users due to steps being present on both the footbridge and to reach the platform from the south entrance to the station. This means that disabled passengers wishing to alight at Totten train station have to get off of Southampton Central, where lifts are available to transfer them from platform to exit. To get more information on the matter and to find out the latest developments, I spoke to Conservative councillor for Totten North, Neville Penman, who for the last six months has been involved in the campaign to make the required changes needed to Platform 2 to make it accessible for disabled railway users. Um, working with South West Trains and Network Rail, I had meetings on the station, took photographs of the state of the stations because nothing's been done for 50 years. And they met me there. They put us on the, um, on the list for the stations in Hampshire. Um, and it went from there. I work a lot with disabled. I'm a carer part-time. Um, and knowing that Platform 2 didn't have um, an exit or entrance, um, I thought that perhaps I can do something about it and, uh, you know, get some of the grants. So from what Neville explains there is looking hopeful that disabled passengers could be receiving good news in April in regard to the better accessibility for them on Platform 2 at Totten Railway Station. This is Alex Daniel reporting for Solon Journalism. An app has recently been launched to help New Forest visitors follow their favourite routes around the National Park. It features up to 27 walks ranging from hikes to longer strolls that are accessible for everyone. The app was launched in November and has already been downloaded 8,000 times. Numbers are expected to rise over the summer. It's been over a year since Waterstones in Southampton was destroyed by a fire when it was targeted in a suspected arson attack. Above Bar Church and Barclays Bank, either side of the bookstore, were renovated, but the empty bookshop remained closed with no refurbishments made until now. It's now looking for new tenants. For more on this story, visit solentjournalism.co.uk. Southampton's favourite bargate shields could be replaced as the current ones are slowly falling apart. Southampton City Council made the comments after residents made concerns about seeing the shields placed on the structure. Talks would be held with Historic England to decide if the remaining bits of the shields can be reserved or the stone will be replaced with something more tough. A YMCA street sleepout held in the busy centre of Guildhall Square has been raising money for vulnerable young people who are sleeping rough. The fundraisers braved the cold weather to, to raise the large amount of money for the charity. Activities, food and drinks were provided to see the volunteers through the night. Luke Henry tells us more. Friday night at the Guildhall saw many people brave the blustery and wet conditions to take part in the YMCA street sleep. The volunteers used sheets, cardboards and tents as beds for the evening as they embarked on the 13-hour sleepout. 
The project was run by the YMCA charity to raise awareness for homelessness as well as mental health in a big project to help young people within the area. The charity organiser, Corin Bull, explained the importance of the sleep out and the purpose of this in more detail. So we're here at the Guildhall Square tonight. There's 70 participants and over 20 volunteers and seven restaurants who have all supported this event to fundraise for vulnerable young people. Um, so we're raising money to help those who are vulnerable, who might need mental health um, support, are homeless. The charity event managed to raise over £16,000, which was a fantastic achievement and a cause for celebration. The evening consisted of a wide range of activities, such as the Cardboard Challenge. Live music was also on offer from a choir, as well as a couple of children playing with the pots and pans. Hot food and drink was also provided throughout the evening, as well as the opportunity to sit down and relax, of course. This is the second sleep out that has happened in Southampton, with one taking place at St Mary's 2 last year, which was put together by the Saints Foundation as homelessness is still very rife in the south coast. Events like this are tackling the problem as we hope to see a reduce in the amount of people living on the streets. This has been Luke Henry for Solent Journalism. That's all from us now. You can find all our stories and more online. Head to solentjournalism.co.uk. We're back with our last TV bulletin of the year at 3.45.